Good morning. A warm welcome to you on this beautiful Easter, excuse me, that's next week, Palm Sunday morning in the month of April. We do hope that you'll join us for Easter services next week at 6.30, 8.30, or 10.30, depending on how early you like to come in the morning. We also invite you to Maundy Thursday, which will be at 4.30 in the afternoon and 6.30. There's two services on Maundy Thursday with the rite of First Communion for our fifth graders at the 6.30 service. We hope you'll come back too on Good Friday where we'll have a 6.30 p.m. service. So with that, I'd invite Ms. Cassie Hines to please, uh, she's going to come to the lectern this morning and tell you a little bit about some exciting news for kids. All right, it is about that time of year again. So good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Cassie Hines. I uh, had previously volunteered to help run Vacation Bible School this year. And then God had different plans. <laughs> My due date is just a couple, about a week after Vacation Bible School, so we'll see how that runs. Um, uh, I'm here today to at least get the ball rolling. So our pool party themed Vacation Bible School will be this summer, June, Monday, June 13th through Thursday, June 16th. It'll run from 8 a.m. till noon. Like many years in the past, we will, be, we will need all of your help um, to help make vac Vacation Bible School successful. We will need at least 14 adults to help be our shepherds, help with crafts. We have story time, games, music, and snacks. We will also need some of our older teenagers to help volunteer for helpers at each station. We will have the nursery open this year, so if you are like me and you have someone who is not quite three years old and you'd like to volunteer but you need someone else to watch your other hooligans, we will have that open. Um, we will be doing things slightly different in one area this year. Instead of running two separate programs where we have the older kids in one and the younger in another, we are running one program. It will all be pool party themed. and. So anyone for ages three years old all the way through the end of sixth grade can join us this year as a Vacation Bible School student. Registration is already open online. There's also forms on the bulletin if you'd like to grab a physical copy instead. And if you're interested in being a volunteer, you can let myself know, Kirsten know, the office. We will gladly take any help we can get. Um, just a little bit. I have not always been a Lutheran. But one of the first experiences I have had with St. John's Lutheran Church is Vacation Bible School. I came here with my cousins and my Aunt Mary Roeder and got two or three years in as a student. So if you know of any friends, cousins, grandkids that you'd like to also attend that don't actually attend our church, they would be more than welcome. And if they're anyone like me, they might actually have lasting memories for a lifetime. With that, after I was old enough to be a student, I decided to volunteer. So these memories can be for people of all ages. You don't have to be a student. You can have anyone is welcome to help out in this. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cassie. We look forward to Vacation Bible School. Again, please see Cassie to sign up, call the church office to help out, and of course, make sure that you get everyone registered, neighbor kids and everyone else. There's quite a number of announcements that I would invite you to please take home your flyer with you today and read it carefully. Concerning the vote coming up on May 1st, please notice that the only way to be eligible to vote is to have made a contribution of record and have received communion and have a record of communion. So you'll want to be sure to fill out the communion card and put that in the offering plate at some point today when it's passed around or on your way home. Most importantly, please keep in prayer uh, all of those people who are listed in the bulletin. So please uh, don't throw your bulletin away. Don't give it to an usher. Don't put it in the basket. Put it in your pocket and take it home with you. We do want to add one name to the prayers, Daniel Ladentine. Uh, and so we keep Danielle in our prayers and um, we trust that God hears us when we pray. We extend our sympathies to, especially to Terry Pauling and her family at the loss of her mother, mother Betty, and so please keep uh, Terry and, and everyone there in your prayers throughout the week. With that said, I invite the congregation to please turn inside the front cover of your red hymnal to the brief order 
of confession and forgiveness. And rising, please face the cross at the back of the church. We gather now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for Jesus' sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our processional gospel is from the Gospel of St. Luke, the 19th chapter. I invite you to please raise high aloft your palm branches this morning. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, there he sent two disciples ahead saying, go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found the colt as he had told them. And as they were untying it, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set their cloaks down on the road. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road, and as he was approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. But he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, even the stones would shout out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please join in our processional hymn this morning.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them comfort me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in a responsive prayer of Psalm 31. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and my body also. For my my life life is spent with sorrow, and and my my years years with sighing. My My strength fails because of my misery, and and my my bones bones waste waste away. away. I am the scorn of all adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I I have have passed passed out out of mind like one one who who is is dead. dead. 
I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I I trust in you, O Lord. I I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Amen. Amen. The second reading is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated for the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room, that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table, and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup is poured out for you. It is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me. His hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it would be who who could do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, The kings of Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so among you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves For who is greater, the one at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, 
so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Jesus said to him, and Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you out with purse, without purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? And they said, No, not a thing. Jesus said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what was written about me is being fulfilled. They said, look, here are two swords. And he replied, it is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, <clears throat> Pray that you may not come <clears throat> excuse me, into the time of trial. And then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will but yours be done. And then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat became like great drops of blood falling on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. Judas approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw, that, saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike the, with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. He touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite all the kids to come forward this morning. Please bring your palm fronds. Okay? Don't be shy. Come on up, guys. I'm going to show you how to do something really neat with this, okay? So, come on up, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Come on up. I'm going to have you stand over here so that you can be on camera and that everybody watching can see you at home as to how to make... And if you want to do this, uh, grown-ups, you can do this too um, if you have one of these palm spears, all right? So, come on over here, guys. Uh, gather around the baptismal font. It'll be a little easier for the camera to see you guys all, okay? <clears throat> now... Uh, today is Palm Sunday, right? Today is Palm Sunday, okay? And that's why you have this palm front here. Excellent. Oh, and can I borrow that for just a moment? Can I borrow this, can I borrow this for just a moment? Yeah. I'll give it back, I promise, okay? I'm going to put that right there, all right? Now, <clears throat> I see that, uh, I see that, uh, Rylan, you've already gotten a head start on the, on the uh, little task, haven't you? That's good, that's good, okay? Now, Today is Palm Sunday, and in addition to people waving palms, right, they, as Jesus came into Jerusalem, he is king of kings, right? He is lord of lords. And so he came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, right? And people were waving their palm branches saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king of kings, Hosanna in the highest. And they were spreading their cloaks on the floor, right? So... Right? They were throwing down so that, he would not, so that he would not get his feet muddy on the road, so that not even the donkey would get its feet muddy on the road. 
as the Lord entered into Jerusalem. So they lined the whole path with all sorts of cloaks and garments of every kind. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Just so that the King of Kings could ride in and not even the donkey would get its feet muddy as he came into the city of Jerusalem. Okay? And while he was coming in, people were saying, Hosanna in the highest. Praise to the one who is the king, the king of kings. Now this was on Sunday, just like today is Sunday. Okay? But then, as the week went on, they gathered to celebrate the Passover, and rumors started to spread about who Jesus was. And the authorities started to make up lies about him, saying that he was an earthly king, saying that he was going to take over, saying that he was going to kick the Romans out, and that he would lead a rebellion. And these lies became so powerful that when Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus, then the leaders, the scribes, the priests, and the elders, together with the Roman soldiers, they came and they arrested Jesus. And that was on Thursday night. And then on Friday, a day that we call Good Friday, it didn't seem like a very good day at the time, they crucified Jesus, they put him to death, and they killed him on the cross. Now, when you come back on Easter Sunday, that's when we celebrate how Jesus comes out of the tomb, how he's alive, how he was raised up from dead, just like that stained glass window shows us, and just like we believe in our hearts. Okay? But on Friday, the day that they put him to death, right, to make sure that he was dead, they took, it wasn't a palm frond, but it was a spear. Okay? It looks kind of like this palm frond. And to make sure that he was dead on the cross, they took the spear and they jabbed it into his side. He was already dead, of course. Okay? Now, even the most worst of all things, like a terrible spear or putting someone to death on a cross, God can turn into something wonderful. God can even turn the cross into something wonderful. So, what I want you to do, follow along with me here, okay? And you can take an extra one of these back to the pew in just a little bit, okay? Go ahead and grab an extra one, either on your way out or right now is fine. If you get a thick one, okay, what I want you to do, if it's a thick one, all right, and some of these actually have two, and it'll be easier if you just use one, okay? If you have a really thick one, if yours is already thin, like Ryland's is, see how hers is already thin, okay? Okay, you don't need to do this, but if yours is thick like this, I want you to strip it in half, okay? And you can have a grown-up help you with this if you like. Yeah, your sister, yeah, that's, that's about medium. You can do it either way, okay? And I have these uh, coloring sheets here, but more importantly, they show you on the back, right, the instructions for how to do this. So I'm going to do this quickly, but you can grab one of these sheets, okay, on the way back, and... Those are the instructions. If you don't get it right the first time, take another palm on your way home. So what you want to do is you want to fold it down like that, okay? So that you've got just a little bit like this. This is going to be the cross itself. So, full, so take the top and mm, put a point up, okay? Put a point up like this, okay? That's fine too, yep. And bring it, fold it down, okay? All right, now you have to sort of fold it sideways at an angle. You have to go like this. Okay, you fold it sideways at an angle. Okay, and there's the first arm of the cross. Now you'll fold it back again to make the arm. Okay, and you'll come behind. And you'll make another arm like that. Okay. And you fold it. You know how you have to crease it like you have to crease paper? And then you go around, you wrap it around the corners like this. I'm doing this kind of quickly. All right. You go around the corners and you come up and you go back down. So you wrap it around the back. Okay. And then you tuck it in on the back side here. All right. The instructions show it much better than what I've showed you, okay? 
So if you take your time and you go slowly and you ask for a grown-up's help, it'll turn out like this, okay? Here you go, sweetheart. There's the one that you came up with, okay? Would you fold your hands, please, and we'll say a prayer, okay? And you can grab one of those sheets on your way back to the... And if you need another palm, you can grab one of those too, okay? So let's pray. Dear God, thank you that your son Jesus is king of kings and that even though he was to die on the cross, he would come to Jerusalem so that he might save us. Oh Lord, we thank you that even death itself could not keep Jesus in the tomb, but that he rose up, that he lives again, and that he promises to give us to life forever and ever with him. We pray all these things in your son Jesus' name, who is the King of Kings. And let's all say together in closing the word Hosanna. Ready? Hosanna. Amen. You can be seated, all right? If you need another spear point, go ahead and take one. All right. Thank you for coming. Make sure you get the instructions too. No, this is one of the Bethlehem Revisited gowns. Yes. Okay, go ahead. All right. Well, I'll take those for you. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus, the one who is King of Kings. Amen. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem that Palm Sunday, and when the people raised their palm branches high and spread their cloaks low on the ground, what they saw matched up and mirrored what they expected. That if this Jesus were in fact King of the Jews, it would make sense. And it would be reasonable. In fact, it would be anticipated and expected that He would enter Jerusalem humbly on the colt, on the foal of a donkey, and that He would come in through the gate and that people would recognize Him as a great rabbi and leader, and have great anticipation that he would be anointed as king of Jerusalem, as king of the Jews, as king of kings. But as the week wore on, their expectations were challenged, and what they thought was reasonable, they were confronted with a powerful argument that it was not, that it was irrational. So it is that Jesus enters Jerusalem and the first thing that He does is He goes into the temple and He overturns the money tables of the money changers and He says, stop making my Father's house a house of prayer into a den of thieves and robbers. Later in the week, He gathers His disciples to celebrate the Passover for all of Israel was remembering how by the blood of the spotless lamb, by the first Passover lamb, they were saved and set free from slavery in Egypt. They crossed through the Red Sea. They wandered through the wilderness. They came into the promised land. And every year since that time, they gathered to remember the Passover. It was their reasonable expectation that as God had prepared a holy place for them, God would bring the king back to Jerusalem. But when Jesus gathered his disciples to celebrate that Passover meal, he wore no crown upon his head. And the meal that they celebrated was ordinary, like every other Passover meal before it. But then something extraordinary happened. For as they remembered the Passover lamb by whose blood they were saved, Jesus took a cup and a loaf of bread. And as the bread came down from heaven, as the manna was let down from above while the Israelites in the wilderness were in the wilderness, while they were sustained and fed with the bread of heaven, so Jesus takes 
this loaf of bread and he breaks it and he says, this is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then thinking of the Passover lamb, they take the cup. Jesus lifts it high and he says, this is my blood that is shed for you. for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. They had no idea yet what was about to happen. Maybe that's not quite right. Indeed, they had spoken earlier of Jesus' suffering and death, and that on the third day, Christ would be raised up again. But they were not able to understand what God's intent for the world was, because they were so focused on what made sense to them. So it was that Peter says to the Lord, hearing about his suffering and death, this must never happen to you. Quite a reasonable statement, if altogether wrong, with the gift of hindsight. But Jesus has not come to conform to our sense of reason. Jesus has not come to serve us as though he were a, a secret Santa. That he might respond to whatever our whims and wishes might be. But he came to serve us as one who would lay down his life for us. As one who would willingly stand in our place. And so the reasonable mind looks at this and says, I would never expect this to be the case. How can this be? It must never happen. But it's not just Peter and the disciples who do not understand how it is that God is to work in the world. In fact, all of the elders, the priests, the scribes, the leaders of the people, the Romans themselves, they all thought that Jesus' kingdom was an earthly one and that His followers would be fighting. And so they are all afraid that the power that they have accumulated, that the authority that they possess is going to be swept away. Indeed it is, particularly for the religious leaders. Because there is only one to whom any allegiance is due, and that is God the Father in heaven. And of this earthly place, Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. And while you were in this world, you were expected to be good citizens of this land or any land in which you live. Again, who would have expected this? But though our expectations, reasonable or unreasonable, as they may or may not be, God does not conform to our expectations, but He sets a new path forward, a new path for service, a new path for mercy, a new path for hope, and a new path for love. No longer is the old code established and kept, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, but Jesus now says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The old law would say that you would have to make sacrifice week after week, month after month, year after year, that you would slaughter an animal and by its blood, the priest would say your sins are forgiven. But now by the one sacrifice, by the pure and spotless Lamb of God, the new Lamb of God, the sins of the world would be atoned for. We expect, in our reasonableness, that we get only what we deserve, but God chooses instead not to deal with us as we deserve, but in an entirely unexpected fashion and in an altogether surprising way. Who could ever have thought it? Who would ever have expected it? The Son of God Himself says, I will give My blood that they may be perfectly redeemed. I will break My body so that they will never again have to offer up any sacrifice other than the sacrifice of a clean heart. 
our expectations for how God works in the world on the cross are shattered and discarded. But the expectation that we thought we could never ask for, that we would never in our wildest dreams demand, the expectation of mercy, of forgiveness, for those who utterly do not deserve it, us, the world, you and me, this expectation. God says to the Son, do my will, that my people may be redeemed. And the Son does. And so death gives way to life. Sin gives way to mercy. Hatred gives way to love. And this first life passes away to the life everlasting that is to come. What are your expectations, friends? What do you ask of Christ? What do you hope to see? Test them against what God has promised to you in His Holy Word and cling to that promise that has never failed anybody and will never fail you. Peace be with you from the one who is crucified and raised again. Amen. Let's rise up as we join our voices in our hymn this morning. Before you are seated, there is one very important thing about what it means to serve the neighbor in Christ Jesus, and I have neglected it before this time this morning. Our altar guild this morning, they are here, they are present at this service and the next. I don't know if you know about the duties of altar guild besides the bread and wine that they put out and the candles they fill with oil, but those ladies, almost all of them are women, not all, there's a few men and uh, young men who who labor with them. But those ladies, the altar guild work week in and week out, two, three, sometimes even four weeks 
uh, four days out of the week. And so this morning, as a way of saying thank you for all of their service, their tireless efforts, uh, the yellow flowers are here both at the altar and at the pulpit and the lectern. And let's give them just a big round of applause for our appreciation. Thank you. And so together, let us confess our Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He is... He, is set. he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. So that was the Nicene Creed, as we would say, on one of the festival Sundays. And it's a good reminder that uh, the pastor should never simply read things by rote and go from memory. Let us join our hearts in prayer for all of God's people in this place and for all the world over in their need. O Lord our God, open our eyes that we might see you, that we might anticipate your work in our lives and in the world, not as we would expect, but as you would have. O Lord, bring us to new life by the sacrifice of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon the church the world over so that in this week of passion and in the Easter season, all may see the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, by our words and through our actions too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, stretch out your hands that we too may take one another's, joining together with all the people of the world to work for peace and justice, for unity, and for the welfare of all. Especially we pray for peace in Ukraine. O Lord, protect the innocent, change the minds of leaders, be with President Zelensky, watch over all who serve Ukraine, change the hearts and minds of those who fight on behalf of Russia. O Lord, let them go home to their homes, let them lay down their arms, let them live in peace and not in bloodshed and not in violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we pray for your healing power that you would let down your Holy Spirit upon Danielle, Judy, Ashley, Denise, and Morgan. O oh Lord, stay close to the side of Les, Mel, Scott. Watch over Kevin and Dwayne, Doug, Denny, and Steve. Bless Dennis and Sandy, Chase, Judy, Todd, Adam, and Amy. Be with Keith and Todd and Diane and Christy and Sharon and Stu. Give every good thing and blessing for Ron and Dieter, for Tyra and Lily, Dylan and Cade and Moni, and all those whom we name now in our heart of hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for the life and the service of your servant, Betty Colmoose. Watch over all of her family, especially bless her children and grandchildren. Surround them together with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands now, O Lord our God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you now to rise and share Christ's peace with one another. Thank you. 
seated for the offerings. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering our Lord, together let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now what has been set before you is here for you, So come, for all things have been prepared. Please be seated, coming forward at the direction of your usher.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty Father, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray in your mercy that you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 347. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Altar Guild, please see me for your rose. Hello.